Hello, this is Omid Naruzi with Team Side Scroller, and this is the final demo for our entire project. I'll start off with me. Hello, this is Omid Naruzi with a quick recap of what I did for the project in mobile apps. In the first sprint, my first user story was, as a player, I want to have a left and right arrow button to push on the game screen that informs me that I can move left or right so that I can approach or avoid enemies. Acceptance criteria was when the game is open, there should be a left and right arrow showing the player that they can move left or right respectively. And here we are on the game screen. If you look at the bottom left, we have a left arrow button and a right arrow button. My second user story was, as a player, I want to press the left or right arrow button so that I can approach or avoid enemies. The acceptance criteria was when the game is open and the user clicks on the left or right arrow, the player should move to the left or right respectively. And if I press the left button, I move left. If I press the right button, I move right. For Sprint 2, my user stories were, as a player, I want to press the screen above me so that I can perform a ranged attack. And the acceptance criteria was, when the game is open and the user clicks on the screen in any direction above them, a ranged attack is performed. If I press above the player, I throw shurikens. The second user story was, as a player, I want to have a finite amount of projectiles for a period of time so that I can not just constantly fire projectiles all over the screen. Acceptance criteria, when the game is open and the user fires a projectile, the amount of projectiles should decrease until he has none. After a short reloading period, the, project, the projectile amount should replenish. And here we are again. If I continue to to touch the screen, I fire shurikens until I have none, and now I can't throw anymore. It should be noted that the reloading feature was removed when we decided to make droppables, which are little items that allow you to refill things like shurikens. On sprint 3, my user story was, as a player, I want my projectiles to kill enemies so that I can raise my score. The acceptance criteria being when the game is open and the player fires a projectile that hits an enemy, the enemy dies with a cool animation. Now if I fire a projectile at a flying enemy, that enemy dies also with a cool animation. The second user story was, as a player, I want my melee attacks to kill enemies so that I can raise my score. The acceptance criteria was when the game is open and the player uses his melee to hit an enemy, the enemy dies with a cool animation. Here we are. Now, if I slash at an enemy, the enemy dies with a cool animation. Let's show that one more time. There we go. My third user story was, as a player, I want the score displayed on the screen to increase with each enemy I kill so that I can keep track of my points. Acceptance criteria was when an enemy is killed by the player, the scores displayed on the screen should increase by 10 for each enemy killed. Here we are. If I kill an enemy, my score goes up by 10. Let's do this one with the flying enemy. Also increase by 10. For Sprint 4, my first user story was, as a player, I want enemies to drop items that replenish my number of projectiles or health so that I have the chance of not running out. The acceptance criteria was, when the game is open and the player kills an enemy, there should be a random chance that the enemy drops an item that falls to the ground that replenishes the player's related resources upon collision with the player. Here we are again. Now I'm going to kill a bunch of enemies and see if I can get any of them to drop something. And there's a health droppable almost immediately. There we go. Not all of them drop something, so that's good. I have another health droppable over here. I get hit so they actually do something. So there's that. And we have a couple shuriken droppables that were dropped by enemies that were killed over here. And here we have a fireball droppable. If I grab that, then I get one more fireball. My second user story was, as a player, I want a fireball to shoot away from me when I press the B button so that I can kill several enemies regardless of type. 
The acceptance criteria was when the game is open and the player pressed B, a fireball should be launched and thrown away from the player, killing all enemies that it collides with. And as I showed previously, if I press the B button, I fire a fireball that goes through multiple enemies and kills each of them. For Sprint 5, my first user story was, as a player, I want to press the Y button to duck so that I can avoid attacks from overhead. Acceptance criteria was when the game is open and the player holds down the Y button, the character should crouch slash duck until Y button is released or another button is pressed. And here we are. If I press the Y button, I duck, and if I let it go, I unduck. My second user story was, as a boss enemy, I want to fire a large fireball at the player so that I can cause damage to the player that is harder to evade. The acceptance criteria was, when the game is open and the boss enemy is present, the boss enemy should descend at each side of the screen and fire a large fireball at the player. When the boss enemy drops, he fires a fireball at the player. My third and final story was, as a boss enemy, I want to travel quickly across the screen and descend to attack the player so that I am harder to attack. The acceptance criteria was, when the game is open and the boss enemy is present, the boss enemy should travel quickly across the top of the screen and descend to attack the player. If the boss enemy is hit by the player, it should perform a berserk motion by darting across the screen twice. And here is the boss enemy. As you can see, he moves from left to right and right to left across the top of the screen and he descends and when you hit the boss enemy he performs a berserk motion across the screen twice there we go so that one more time down here so you can see how it affects the player as you can see it hurts him Hello, this is Tyrell Tachibana, and today I'll be going over my final sprint. Now, under my first user story, under movement functionality, I have, as a player, I want to press the A button so that I can perform a jump straight up. And the acceptance criteria is that when the game is open and the user clicks the A button, the player should jump straight up and fall back to the ground. I'm going to bring in my emulator. I'm going to press the A button. You see that he jumps up straight up and right back down to the ground. <clears throat> For my next user story, I have as a player, I want to press the left or right arrow button combined with the A button so that I can jump diagonally. And the acceptance criteria for that is that when the game is open and the user presses the left or right arrow combined with the A button, the player should jump diagonally and land on the ground. All right, jump, arrow, move. Now for my next user story I have, as a player, I want to press the X button to melee attack so that I can attack enemies. And the acceptance criteria is that when the game is open and the user clicks on the X button, the player performs a melee attack. Melee attack. Now I have, as a player, I want to appear to slash in front of me when I melee attack so that the game appears more realistic. And the acceptance criteria is that when the game is open and user clicks on the X button, the user's character performs a sword swinging animation. As you can see, he's performing the sword swinging animation. For my next user story, I have, as a player, I want the dialogue to appear when I die so that I can input my name to record my score. And the acceptance criteria is that when the game player runs out of health, a dialogue fragment should appear requesting the user to input his or her name. The name and score should then be recorded in game storage. So I'm going to go ahead and die. Oh no, there we go. My name is going to be test. I'm going to say no. I'm going to open the game back up. And you can see under scores, 
There I am, right at the top. Now you can see under my next user store I have as a player, I want a dialogue to appear after the game over dialogue asking if I want to play again. And the acceptance criteria is that when the player inputs his name and presses OK, another dialogue should appear asking if he or she wants to play again. If yes is pressed, the game should restart. If no is pressed, the game should exit. Yes, and you can see the game restarts. And you can see when I press no, the game is closed. And for my next user story, I have as a player, I want background music to play as soon as the start menu appears so that I can be stimulated during all portions of the game. And the acceptance criteria is that when that app is launched, the background music should start, continue to play when the game is opened. I'm going to go ahead and turn the sound up. And then I'm going to open up Donzo. you can hear the start menu music playing. And you can even hear it while it loads. And for the next user story I have as a player, I want to have an option in the pause menu to turn off the background music so that I don't get annoyed. And the acceptance criteria is when the game is open and the player pauses the game, there should be an option for turning the background music off that when pressed disables the background music. And here I turn it off and just for good measure, turned it back on. For my next user story I have as a player, I want to have a shield power up travel across the screen so that I can be immune to damage for a fixed number of hits. And the acceptance criteria is that when the game is open, a shield power up should randomly travel across the screen that gives the player immunity from three hits of damage upon collision with the player. And bring in my emulator. And there is a shield power-up icon randomly traveling across the screen. And for my next user story I have as a player, I want a UI component to show when I have the shield power-up so that I can be aware of the power-up and how many hits I have left. The acceptance criteria is that when the game is open and the player has the shield power up. A three shield icon should appear near the health user interface that decreases by one each time the player gets hurt. There should also be a shield drawn on the player while he has the power up. When the player gets hit a third time, he should no longer have the shield. Luckily, I just got it. And from here you can see I have the three shield icons over by the hearts and I have the shield user interface around me. And then you see I got hit got hit again and got hit again and now you can see I no longer have it all right should be the end of my video thank you hello this is Micah McKinnon with a recap of the user stories I completed for the project and mobile apps
In the first sprint, my first user story was as a player, I wanted to have five hearts of health show up on the screen when I start the game so that I can survive longer. Acceptance criteria was five hearts of health showing up at the top right of the game screen when the game begins. Here we are on the game screen after starting a game. As you can see in the top right corner we have five hearts. It should be noted that we did add a sixth heart later on. My second user story was as a player I want to have the score show on the screen so that I know how awesome I am at the game. Acceptance criteria was the score shows up on the left part of the game screen when the game begins. Back on the game screen you can see we also have a score in the top left corner of the game. My third user story was as a player I want to stay on the screen if I travel left or right so that I always know where I am on the screen. Its acceptance criteria was when the game is open and the user travels to the left or right edges of the screen they do not disappear from the screen. Here we are traveling right and now left and as you can see the player remains on the screen. My fourth user story was as a player I wanted to have a cool background so the game appears more realistic. Acceptance criteria was when the game is open there is a cool background that appeared. Here we have our cool background. My fifth user story was as a player I wanted to have the background move as I get closer to the right edge of the screen so the game appears more realistic. The acceptance criteria was the cool background moves with the player so that the game has a realistic feel to it. As you can see as I move right, the background moves with me. And my final user story for Sprint 1 was as a player, I want to have the background not move when I am at the left edge of the screen so that I am always traveling towards the end of the level. With acceptance criteria of the cool background does not move when the player reaches the left edge of the screen. And as I move left, the background does not move. The user stories I had in Sprint 2 were as a flying enemy, I want to travel consistently either left or right across the air and out of reach of the player so that I can try to attack the player from a safe distance. Acceptance criteria was when the flying enemy appears it should travel consistently in a horizontal trajectory outside the reach of the player. Back on the game screen, we have a flying enemy traveling horizontally out of reach of the player. The second user story was as a flying enemy, I want to spawn off the screen so that I do not randomly appear on the screen. Its acceptance criteria was when the flying enemy spawns, it should approach from off the screen and out of view of the player. Here we have a flying enemy that has just spawned off the screen and out of view of the player. For Sprint 3, my user stories were, as a player, I want the scores page to show a list of all the recorded scores and the names of the players who received those scores so that I can compare my score with other players who have played on the same device. Acceptance criteria, when the scores page is open, a list of scores and player names should be listed in order of overall score. Here we are on the scores page. We have the players' names, scores listed in order of score. My second story was as a flying enemy, I want to fire a projectile at a random position while flying that is directed at the player so that I can hurt him. With acceptance criteria being, when the flying enemy arrives at a random spot on the screen, it should fire a projectile at the player that reduces his health on collision. As the flying enemy travels across the screen, it fires a projectile, and the projectile damages the player upon collision. I had the following user stories in Sprint 4. As a player, I want a dialogue to appear when I press the back button so that I can change options or just take a break. Acceptance criteria was when the game is open and the player presses the back button, a pause menu dialogue should appear with options. When I press the back button, the pause menu opens displaying the different options available. My second user story was as a player, I want to have the option to either resume or exit the game from the pause screen so that I can choose whether or not to continue with the game. Acceptance criteria, when the game is open and the pause menu is open, there should be options to either resume the game or to exit it. Back on the pause screen, we have options to either resume or exit the game. For Sprint 5, my first user story was as a player, I want to have an invincibility power-up travel across the screen so that I can be immune to damage for a fixed duration of time. The acceptance criteria was when the game is open and invincibility power-up should randomly travel across the screen that gives the player immunity from damage upon collision with the player. Here we have an invincibility power-up traveling across the screen. The player is now invincible. As you can see, it takes no shield damage or heart damage. My final user story was as a player, I want a UI component to show when I have the invincibility power-up so that I can be aware of the power-up and how long it will last. Its acceptance criteria was when the game is open and the player has the invincibility power-up, an icon should appear near the score's UI with a timer next to it that counts down from 30. The player also should be rendered at half opacity to indicate an invincibility. When the counter reaches zero, the player should no longer be invincible. 
I'm now invincible, and as you can see, the icon appears near this course, and it counts down from 30, and we're going to start over again. So it's counting down from 30 again. Players also rendered at 50% opacity. And I'm no longer invincible. Let's see if I take damage. And I do. I think following our stories by myself, Drew Demechko, uh, for mobile apps development term project. The first section is Sprint 1 Stories. Uh, the first part, non-game screen functionality uh, for the player. The first user story, as a player I want to have an initial screen with a start button so that I know how to start the game. The acceptance criteria, when the user opens the application there is a start button on the initial screen. If you look over to the right there's a start button. Uh, the second user story, as a player I want to press the start button so that I can begin playing the game. The acceptance criteria, when a user clicks on the start button, it opens up an instance of the new game, of the game. So clicking start. And the instance of the new game is right here. The second part, uh, first user story, as a player I want to have an initial screen with an exit button so that I can exit the game. The acceptance criteria, when the user opens the application there is an exit button on the initial screen. If you look over to the right, there's an exit button right here. The acceptance, uh, the next user story, as a player I want to press the exit button so that I can exit the game. The acceptance criteria, when a user clicks on the exit button, it shuts the application. So clicking on the exit button, it closes down the application. The final part of the Sprint 1 stories. Uh, the first story, as a player, I want to have an initial screen with a scores button so that I can compare my scores with other players who played on the same device. The acceptance criteria, when the user opens the application, there is a scores button on the initial screen. As you can see, the scores button's over here. The second user story, as a player, I want to press the scores button so that I can compare my scores with other players who played on the same device. The acceptance criteria, when the user clicks the scores button, it opens a new high scores activity with a clean and organized UI. So if you click the scores, there's some scores already, uh, just to display how neat it looks. Okay, the Sprint 2 story. Uh, concentrated on movement functionality for enemy. Uh, first user story, as a ground enemy, I want to travel consistently, either left or right across the ground, so that I can try to attack the player. The acceptance criteria, when the ground enemy appears, it should travel consistently in a horizontal tra trajectory. So when we start the game up here, we can tell that uh, these enemies traver, travel consistently uh, left or right across the screen and they're coming in both directions. The second user story, as a ground enemy, I want to spawn off the screen so that I don't randomly appear on the screen. Uh, the acceptance criteria, when the ground enemy spawns, it should approach from off screen and out of view uh, of the player. So let me resume the game and illustrate that, if I don't die. And as you can see from the right, there comes uh, monsters from off the screen, who knows where. Okay. Uh, sprint 3 story. Uh, focused on attack functionality for the enemy. Uh, the user story. As a ground enemy, I want to glide with the player so that I can hurt him. Uh, the acceptance criteria, when the ground enemy collides with the player, it should hurt the player, reducing his health. 
So when we resume, I get hit by this enemy from the left, and you can tell it uh, takes down my health up here. The second user story, as a subtype of ground enemy, I want to glide with the player and have defenses so that the player cannot just jump on me to hurt me. The acceptance criteria, when the subtype of ground enemy collides with the player, even if the player jumps on it, it should hurt the player reducing his health. So let's see if we can find a player like that. Uh, I'll probably get a restart here. Okay, uh, this one with spikes on it. Uh, so if I jump here, let's do it again. Uh, you notice I still get hurt from that enemy uh, since it had defenses on him. The Sprint 4 user stories uh, focused on audio functionality. So let's up the volume here so we can tell. Uh, the first user story, as a player I want sound effects to play when the user performs an action so that the game feels more realistic. The acceptance criteria, when the game is open and the player performs any action, a related sound should play. So let's resume the game and play some of these sounds. And as you hear, there's a bunch of sounds playing at this. Based on my moves, or the enemy's moves. The second user story for this section, as a player I want a sound effect to play when an enemy dies so that the game feels more realistic. The acceptance criteria when the game is open and an enemy dies or late sound should play during its death animation. So when we resume the game and hit one of these, you hear that um, air, but it's a sound for the air enemies when they die. So the third part of the audio functionality, as a player I want to have an option in the pause menu to turn off the sound effects so that I don't get annoyed, uh, which is why I had it muted. Uh, the acceptance criteria, when the game is open and the player pauses the game, there should be an option for turning the sound effects off that when pressed disables the sound effects. So right here. So we can tell uh, no sound that was currently there before and you can also turn the music off. Right. Right, sprint 5 for game screen functionality for the player. Uh, the user story as a player I want to have a double score power up travel across the screen so that I can score double the points for a certain amount of time. The exceptions criteria when the game is open, a double score power up should randomly travel across the screen. That gives the player double score for a duration of time upon collision with the player. And what we're looking for here is a 2x symbol. Uh, the user, the next user story that's similar. As a player, I want to have a UI component show when I have the double score power up so that I can be aware of the fact that I am earning double points. The acceptance criteria when the game is open and the player has the double score power up, an icon should appear to the right of the scores UI. While this power up is active, the score should increase by 20 with each kill. After a certain amount of time, the icon should disappear and the score increment should go back to 10. So let's resume the game and see if we can't get a uh, times two power up here to spawn shortly. Great, and here's the times two power up. Uh, so if you were paying attention, we only got 10 points uh, per enemy kill. And in this case, we'll get 20, so it'll go from 230 to 250. And as you can see in the upper left, it's keeping track of uh, how long I have the power up for.
right and it's down right now so this enemy should only give me 10 points instead of uh, the power up which would be 20 so from 340 to 350.